So today I'm taking simulation immersion into the next level. But first, I bought this button box online. It's good. It's uh, functional, but the design, it just doesn't really fit my sim rig. And I think the experience is so much more immersive when you are sitting in your rig and you have the cockpit of your dream car, or at least design that perfectly fits your needs. So today, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm building a custom central console inspired by the MG GTR, but with the functionality of GT3 race car. To ensure the best uh, possible design and perfect fit, I will be using 3D scanning to capture both the central console of the MG GTR and my sim rig this will allow me to create a console that blends seamlessly instead of just uh, adapting generic design i want something that looks and feels props built for my racing experience so i will be handling all the electronic myself and when it comes to 3d printed parts i don't want them to just look like a raw 3d prints with visible layer lines so i will be sanding priming and painting everything to give it a clean high-end finish as possible this is going to be a full do-it-yourself sim racing build combining 3d scanning 3d printing custom electronics and uh, race inspired design so if you are into sim racing uh, or custom builds or high-end immersion make sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss any parts of this project <laughs> To kick off this project, I start with reverse engineering the original AMG GTR sensor console. Using a 3D scanner, I capture the exact geometry of the part in high detail. This gives me a precise digital model that I can use as the base for my custom button box. My goal is to stay through to the iconic V-shape layout for the console. This is the car that inspired the entire project, with the aggressive design, powerful presence and pure emotion. Before we dive into the build, let's fire up the beast one last time, since it's going to sleep for a while. Now it's time to 3D scan this stream deck. I already removed the top cover to uh, capture just the man body with all buttons uh, properly. The goal here is to get an accurate 3D model that I can integrate into the button box uh, design. Before starting, let me turn off the, the man light. Okay, so this will help reduce the reflection and ensure a clean and more precise 3D scan. I have uh, my scanner. I need just to press the green button like that. Okay, so I'm using the uh, blue line laser mode for more accuracy, but it's important to ensure that enough markers are visible during the scan to achieve the best uh, possible data. So far, everything is looking good. So let's keep going. I imported the 3D scan data into 3D Studio Max, my preferred modeling software. Although you can do the same with any CAD tool like Fusion 360. The first step was to scale down the scan of the MG GTR central console to fit the dimensions of my sim racing chassis. It's important to take precise measurements early to avoid issues during assembly later. To start modeling, I created a plane, converted it to an editable poly and use it poly draw tool. Instead of using scan just for visual reference, I actually draw directly on top of the scanned mesh. This way, every vertex I move stay looked on the surface of the 3D scan. After finishing the base 3D model, it was time to create the cutout for the buttons and other components. I use a digital caliber to take precise measurements of each button, then Inside 3ds Max, I created 2D circles with matching diameters. Each circle was cloned as a reference and given an extrude modifier. When I applied the Pro Boolean, the original 2D circle remained, which allows me to easily adjust the diameter later. That way, I can quickly update any measurements, just like in CAD software. To check the internal structure of the model, I used the slice modifier in 3ds Max. 
This is a great way to visualize the insides of the mesh and detect any overlapping geometry or unwanted intersection between parts. It also allows me to inspect the wall thickness, which is really important when preparing parts for 3D printing, especially to avoid weak areas or parts that are too thin to print properly. While CAD software like Fusion 360 offer more advanced analysis tools, I found that using Slice View in 3ds Max gave me enough control for this type of modeling. Before moving on to printing, I double check every detail, including part fitments, alignments and clearance to make sure everything will assemble smoothly in the real world. For this project, I used both the Creality K1 Max and the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. While they are both excellent printers, their build volume was still too small for printing the full console as one piece, so I had to split the model into two parts. When slicing, I kept the most settings as default, but one important change I made was increasing the wall loops from 2 to 7, since I planned to do a lot of sanding and finishing later. I want to make sure there was enough surface material to work with. Once the parts were printed, you can clearly see the layer lines, especially on curved areas and large surfaces. This is completely normal with 3D printing and just part of the process. Those lines appear because the model is peeled up layer by layer, straight from the printer with no post-processing. I glued the two parts together using automotive front window glue same type used for car windshields. To fill small gaps between pieces, I also applied max fiber a strong feeler commonly used in body work. This step is really important to make sure no lines or seams show later when painting. A smooth connection at this stage saves a lot of work during finishing. Before priming, I focused on preparing the surface to be as smooth and clean as possible. At the beginning, I used the sanding machine to quickly remove or wrap out the texture of the 3D print. But after most of the work was done by hand sanding, especially around curves and detailed area where precision is key. Since PLA is sensitive to heat, I sand it under water to avoid melting the surface or leaving pressure marks. I work it through multiple grit level, starting with 200, then 400, and finishing at 800 grit for a fine smoother finish. To eliminate small gaps or imperfection left by the print, I applied mastic filler where needed. This stage takes time, but it's critical. The better the prep, the cleaner and the more professional the final result will look after printing. When priming, I started with a light first coat, applying just enough to cover the surface evenly. Then I let it dry for about 15 minutes before applying the second layer. This method helps the primer bond better and prevents drip or uneven texture. Once the primer is dry, you can lightly sand it using fine grit sandpaper till the surface feels smooth to the touch. This step can make a big difference in the final result. If you still notice small imperfections after sanding, you can simply reprime those areas to get everything perfectly clean before painting.
I added heat set insert to the part that need to be screwed together, ensuring strong and durable threads. To avoid damaging the PLA, I limit the soldering iron temperature to 220 Celsius, which is just enough to melt the plastic without burning it. This allows the insert to bond firmly into place without deforming the parts. I used carbon fiber vinyl on some parts of the project to add premium look and feel, since high quality finish was one of the main goals. Then I jumped to Photoshop to design the layout of the panel, making sure every element from logos and labels was perfectly placed. Before sending the files to the carton machine, I double checked all alignments and measurements to make sure everything matched the physical model. I applied the cat vinyl part using water mixed with few drops of baby shampoo, which gave me the flexibility to position each piece precisely without it sticking immediately. For the final placements and to help the vinyl comfort around the curves and edges, I used the heat gun. Especially important when working around corners and tight areas. To get the premium glossy finish, I first lightly sanded the matte pants I had applied earlier. Then I sprayed three layers of clear coat for a deep shine. Once dry, I wet sanded the surface starting from 2000 grit up to 3000 grit to prepare it for polishing. Polishing PLA is tricky, it heats up fast, so you need to be careful. I use a three step polishing process with compounds and wax. A polishing machine is needed, but it's important to keep the RPM low to avoid damaging the surface. It's a sensitive step, but if it's done right, it gives clean, professional, mirror-like finish. In the next video, we will go through the electronics and start creating the MG-style dashboard. We will install the components and finally see the full results in action. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any parts of the process. Ciao!